Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with chicken lettuce wraps. That's right, this was inspired by a very popular appetizer at a very popular Chinese restaurant chain. And I don't want to say which one, but I will give you a hint. What they lack in authenticity, they more than make up for in initials. And not only is this incredibly delicious, it's also very, very simple to make, although there is a little bit of slicing and dicing involved. But when you taste the results, totally worth it. So let's go ahead and get started by prepping our mushrooms. And for this, we're gonna use shiitake mushrooms, which I think are generally underused. They're definitely one of the most delicious fungus among us. And we're gonna dice these up, but first you wanna remove the stem. That tends to be a little too fibrous and tough to use, so we'll get rid of that. And then we'll take the caps and we'll just slice them this way and then turn them and cut them that way to get a nice small dice. And of course you can double those up to go a little quicker. And once you have those dice, you can always go through with the blade again and give them a little extra working over, but that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and we'll transfer those into our mixing bowl and it's on to the water chestnuts. So I have one small can I drained and you can see they kind of look like little sliced potatoes. And by the way, water chestnuts are not a nut. They're a corm. And what's a corm? I'm not sure. But what I do know is these have a mild sweetness and a beautiful crunch, which is the main reason they're in this. And all we need to do is take a knife and just chop those up until they're basically about the same size as the mushroom pieces. And once that's been done, we'll go ahead and add that to the mixing bowl. And then to that, we're also gonna add some diced yellow onion and some chopped green onions, also known as scallions. And we're also gonna want a good amount of freshly grated ginger. So we'll throw some of that in. And at that point, we can move on to the main ingredient, the chicken. And for this, I'm gonna use boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Yes, of course you can use breasts for this, but don't. It's just not gonna work as good as the chicken thigh, which has more juice, more fat, more flavor. And the strategy here is before we try to chop it, we're gonna slice it up a little bit, kind of cube it up. So I'm gonna slice it this way, and then we'll give it a slice the other way. And when it's basically cubed up and in smaller pieces, then you can start chopping. And really any big sharp knife is gonna work. But if you do have a Chinese cleaver, which I just remembered I did, you can use that and that will do a great job. So we're gonna chop that up pretty coarsely. Don't go too fine. So something like that should be just about perfect. So we'll give that chicken the old choppa choppa. We will add it to our bowl. And then the only other things we need to add to this are a little bit of brown sugar and a little bit of soy sauce. And then we'll take a spatula, we'll mix that thoroughly. And as soon as that's mixed, go ahead and pat it down, cover it, and just refrigerate till needed, which is gonna be pretty soon. Now, if you did wanna do this step ahead of time and leave it in the fridge for a couple hours, that would be fine but I don't really think this is necessarily something you wanna leave overnight. But anyway, we're gonna wrap that up and refrigerate it and move on to the last bit of prep here, which is our braising liquid slash glaze. So in a bowl, I'm gonna add a little bit of ketchup, of course, a very, very authentic Chinese ingredient. We're also gonna add a whole bunch of finely minced garlic, a little more brown sugar. We're also gonna add some dry mustard powder. Now I'm just using the regular kind, but if I had the hot Chinese kind, I would use that. And then speaking of hot, I'm gonna add some chili flakes, you could certainly sneak in some cayenne if you want. We're also gonna need some soy sauce and some toasted sesame oil. We're also gonna add some seasoned rice vinegar. And then last but not least, a big splash of chicken broth or stock, or you could even use water. And then all we need to do is take a whisk and give this a good mix. So our chicken mixture is set, our braising liquid slash glaze is set, and we can head over to the stove. And we'll place a heavy duty skillet on high heat with a couple tablespoons of vegetable oil in it, and we will start cooking our chicken mixture. So I'm gonna dump that in, and we'll give that a quick little stir fry, just until the chicken doesn't look raw anymore. So just cook it stirring until it looks like this. It's only gonna take a couple minutes, at which point we're gonna dump in half, just half, of our braising liquid slash glaze, and we'll stir that in. And all we're gonna do is continue cooking on high heat until this starts to caramelize a little bit. And do not let my seamless editing fool you. This is gonna take a while, maybe 10, 15 minutes, this pan's pretty crowded, and there's a lot of moisture with the mushrooms and the chicken, etc. So it's going to take a few minutes for that stuff to evaporate, but eventually it will. And when that happens, that chicken and mushrooms and water chestnuts will start caramelizing. By the way, that's one reason we're using nonstick pan here. We basically want the fond attached to the food, not the bottom of the pan. And we'll talk more about that on the blog post. But anyway, we're going to keep cooking that until the liquids reduce and things start to caramelize and brown up a little bit. And it should eventually look something like this. And at this point, go ahead and lower your heat down to medium low, and we'll pour in the rest of the liquid and stir that in. We'll just cook this for another minute or two, and that is pretty much it. So that first half of that liquid, we basically wanted caramelized onto the chicken, into the chicken. And then the second addition is basically just to rehydrate it a little bit. 
So it has a nice sticky wet texture and isn't too dry. So we'll stir that in. And like I said, we'll cook that at medium low for a couple minutes. And at that point, we're basically done, except I do want to add some fresh herbs here. And we're going to stir in a mixture of fresh basil, fresh cilantro, and some more green onion. And as soon as that's mixed in, you're ready to serve, except for one thing. That's right. You have to taste for seasoning. Now, mine was absolutely perfect. Didn't need any salt. That soy sauce was enough. But of course, you have to taste and check yours. And at that point, we're ready to serve this up. And of course, it goes without saying, you got to serve this next to some lettuce leaves, which as you can see, I have here. And then just to make it look pretty, I decided to garnish the top of mine with a little bit of radish. And those chicken lettuce wraps are officially done. And by the way, don't use any fancy lettuce. No hipster lettuce, please. You really want to go with the iceberg here. Just cut it in quarters, take out the center part. And what iceberg has going for it is it's stiff and it's juicy, which is the perfect contrast to this spicy, slightly sweet filling. I mean, that is just an unbelievably, incredibly, awesomely delicious bite. And of course you could do dainty little bites like that or grab a bigger leaf and really fill it up like this one. But either way, you're in for a huge treat, all right? So I don't really do a lot of copycat recipes and I don't even think this is really a copycat recipe. This is just my take on that particular dish. But I really was thrilled at how it came out. I thought it was pretty close. And as my good friends Cypress Hill once almost sang, if you want to be a lettuce wrap superstar and live large, a big house, five cars, you really should give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.